So on the hero's journey, you will feel a call to action and you'll feel a denial of the call to action. What this feels like for me is rationalization. What this feels like for me is a denial of self, rationalizing my inability to do the thing that I know I need to do. Okay, Years ago, years and years ago, 10 years ago, actually to be exact, I told a friend that I don't think I have the patience to be in a lab all the time. I don't think being a scientist is for me because of that patience issue. Now, what that eventually led to and what I was talking about was I didn't know what to do with my future. I didn't know what to go to school for because at the time I thought college was the answer to all my solutions, all my problems. If I go to college, I'll solve all my problems. But what do I go to college for? I don't know. I don't think I should be a scientist because I don't have the patience for it. Hmm. Then I go to college for physics because actually what I wanted to do was be a scientist. Interesting. Interesting. And that led to something else, led to something else, led to something else. You take a step towards your goal and then you recalibrate. You take another step. And over time, it gets you to either your goal or a place that you want to be because you're taking those steps forward. Anytime you stagnate, anytime you don't move forward, then you're going to start regretting where you are. Uh, The denial of the call to action for me, feels like those rationalizations. I don't. I don't think I'm patient enough to be a scientist. Ah, you need to pursue looking into how to be a scientist, or or to be a scientist. Like take those steps, because it might be exactly what you want, and you're just you're rationalizing that. Uh, I don't think I can. I felt this again recently with this whole uh, tech career thing. So I was thinking IT, IT is for me. Yeah, I like setting up infrastructure and troubleshooting problems and I could set up a server and manage that and be a, be a network administrator. You work more on the business infrastructure side of technology rather than the development side, the coding side. Not that IT doesn't code. There's plenty of scripting. <laughs> no, there's plenty of coding that can go into IT roles. Absolutely. But I was thinking, like, oh, I don't want to be working on developing software. Because, I mean, that would, I don't know, something about it. It was just, I'd rather work on the infrastructure because there's also more of a people side to it. And it's a little more well-rounded than just coding all the time. Clearly, I wasn't understanding all the the. the job requirements of a software engineer. Fair. Okay. Julia, do you copy? Oh, man, turn that down. So, it didn't matter if I wasn't understanding all the requirements for a software engineer or not. That's fine. In my head, I was rationalizing that, oh, you definitely don't want to go down a, a coding pathway you want to focus more on like, yeah, some coding, some server development, some people work and some debugging and some internet connection issues. And so, uh, okay. And so I did that. Here I am with my IT job. Great. Great. And now I recalibrate and I realize, oh, dang, I do want more programming in my life. I want to work more on building software. And that can be something as simple as a script. That can be something as a a number guessing game that I talked about in a previous video. Uh, Okay. So I've taken a step and I recalibrate and I realize that those past things I was telling myself were rationalizations for why I couldn't do the thing that I really want to do, which is be a developer. Okay. Are there IT roles for development? Yes. Do I know them off the top of my head? No, that's what Google's for. <laughs> are are there roles for development in software engineering? Of course. What what are you talking about? So these pathways that I that I'm curious about, that I'm actually interested in pursuing, they exist. So in the past, when I've thought like, where do you want to go? And that little voice says, Oh, I'd like to code more in my life. Yeah, but I don't really want to be a developer, right? I want to be more like IT thing. I don't have the patience to be a scientist. I don't. 
have the skills to code something. I don't. Uh, you're telling yourself these rationalizations so that you don't do the thing that you really want to do. For me, that's how the denial towards the call to action takes place. And when I when I feel that now, I need to be so aware of that rationalization. I need to be so aware of that denial of self, that denial of my ability, that denial of what I want. I need to be aware of the denial of the call to action in my own life. Just do the thing. Do the thing that really interests you and it might really scare you and you might really think I'm not capable or it's too frustrating or it'll cost a lot or no one's done it before me so I can't do it. Whether it's humanity or your family or your neighbor, it doesn't matter. Those are all illusions. Those are all lies that you're telling yourself. That's what a rationalization is. It's a lie. Stop lying to yourself, Luke. Stop lying to yourself. Go out and do the thing you really want to do. Accept that call to action and take action. Start that hero's journey. And it'll be difficult. That's the, that's the definition of that literary structure. And I mean, it could be more than a literary structure. I mean, we'll debate that more later. <laughs> I'd love to put out more videos on the hero's journey. It's so fascinating. So just keep that in mind. Don't deny the call to action in your life. Whatever you're, whatever you're being called to do, whatever you're thinking of doing, whatever comes into your life as an opportunity, don't rationalize it away. Don't deny it. Do it. See where it takes you. Whew. Here we go. Have a good day.